has to do for you, he has already done. Say it again. Some of you get it, some of you ain't get it. Everything that God has to do for you, He has already done it. Everything, 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 everything. Only thing, only one thing that God promised He was going to do for us that He have not done yet, that was to come back for us. Yes. That's the only thing left for Him to do now, is to come back. Everything that he has promised to do for you, he already did it. He already did it. If you ain't get it yet, that ain't on God. That's on you. You are still here? If you ain't get it yet, that ain't on God. That's on you. Even you being possessed, if you are, by any demonic spirit, that ain't on God. Because he hung on a tree. So he became sin for you. Amen? He became a curse. He took on the curse for you. So the curse is never supposed to get to you. You're never supposed to be cursed by no demonic force. Because God stood in the gap for you. So what you're experiencing, if you are experiencing any demonic curse, is because of either some door that was open in your family line, your bloodline, by your ancestors, or by you. Amen? Amen. God here? Yeah. All right. And if you are of age, 18, 19, 20, 21. You have legal rights to break that curse that was left or that came by way of your ancestors. You could stop that. Amen. See, my brother Oldest brother, father, let me go as far as my father. I didn't know much about my grandfather in terms of, you know, if he was doing any stuff on the side, on Grammy. So I can't go that far. But as far from my father, he had children with different women before he was married. My, my, my brother, oldest one, the same thing. The next one that was before me, the third oldest one, the second oldest one, the same thing. And I'm the third oldest boy. And I say, that ain't happening with me. I'm not going to have no children before I'm married. So I made up in my mind, I was going to break that curse line. My father was an alcoholic. My brother drink, all of them drink. I made up in my mind, I'm not going to be an alcoholic. And I never was drunk one day in my life. I'm testifying up the way I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never drunk one day in my life. Because I made up in my mind, I would break that curse from off of my family. I don't want to put it to the generation after me. My three brothers after me, none of them have a problem with drinking. And I don't know if they have outside children. You know, again, I can't trace that. But I say I'm going to break it. Amen? I made up in my mind that I'm going to break it. You could make up in your mind that you're going to break it. Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on in your bloodline. You could say, the buck can stop with me. What demonic things they were involved with, you got the power to break that from off of the generation that comes after you. 
It starts with you. Hello? It starts with you. Now, I just want to say this and throw this out there while I remember. You know, I've been in ministry now, or the church ministry, front line for 18 years. This July is 18 years, church anniversary. <laughs> Me and my wife. Full time. From day one, from the first year, we were full time. We don't count the year that we spent seeking God. That would make 19. We spent the first year just seeking God to be prepared for ministry. And we were still full time, not working, but trusting God without a church. Amen? Amen. One of the hardest things that I have encountered as a senior pastor is getting the people of God to love one another and work together. It's, it's, it's like a fight to get children of God to love one another, to work together as brothers and sisters. A war. It's like, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And if it ain't that, then it's your mother. Something going on. It's a war. And I've been preaching and trying to get us to work together as one family from day one. And some people literally got angry and left church because they wasn't for that. And I'm still trying to get the, this body, I even in talking about the, 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 the general, everything out there, this body of Christ, this part of the body in here to work together as one. We must learn to work together. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Beloved, let us love one another. Lovers of God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Yes. Amen? Amen. And he said, how can you say you love God who you have never seen, but you can't love your brother and your sister who you see every day? Where is your love? You can't love the people that you worship with every Sunday, every Friday. You can't get along with them for whatever the reason may be. Why? Why? Why can't we get along? And, and, and this is what the devil fight the church with. He wants to keep us at war against one another. Fighting against one another while he sit on the side and laugh at you. We're supposed to be able to love each other. The Bible says, how could you say the love of God if you, if you see a brother hungry and you have food in your cupboard and you send him away hungry and didn't help him? Where's your love? Your brother have need and you can help him but you don't help him. Where is your love? And so I just want to, to come in with that to get your minds open to begin to love the people. These, these, listen, your enemy, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now, you know, the devil used flesh and blood. So you see in flesh and blood. But you got to learn to see beyond what you see and begin to bind the spirit that is driving that flesh and blood. Amen? See, you could rebuke a spirit. You could bind a spirit. You could kill a spirit. And you won't go to jail. But if you kill flesh and blood, you're going to jail. If you allow the enemy to get up in somebody to get you so upset, and you pick up something and hit that person, and that person falls dead, you charge with either manslaughter, or murder. First degree, second degree, third degree, murder. Amen? And so you can't allow people to cause you to miss out on what God has for you. 
You cannot allow people to stop you from going where God is trying to take you. And the devil uses people. And sometimes he uses the people that's closest to you to get up in you in your face, to agitate you and aggravate you, to get you to respond in a way that you should not be responding. You have weapons that you can use, prayer, the word, to fight and combat any plan of the enemy. Don't allow yourself to be dragged into a flesh battle. You're bigger than that. You have more sense than that. You got too much degrees to be out there on the streets fighting. Don't allow someone to pull you into a flesh battle when you can go in your closet and you could win the battle right in your closet. I know some of you looking and you wondering, where is he going with this today? Hallelujah. Don't worry about where I'm going. Don't worry about where you are. Amen? Because God said, when he see you, he see you as a blessed person. He see, when he made you, he made you, he said, you are a peculiar person. You are a royal priesthood. You are chosen. You are chosen. Amen? Amen. You, you, you didn't come here today by luck. It was the spirit of God that drove you here. That's why you're here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't come here by chance. You had to be here. Everything that happened in your life before this was pointing you and preparing you to be here today. Everything that you went through, whether good or bad, was preparing you to be right here today. Because God now wants to release a word into your spirit to tell you now that it's go time. It's time to go. It's time to move. It's time to receive your inheritance. It's time to walk into your blessing. It's time to walk into your season of prosperity. The season of delay, the season of denial is over. The season of rejection on your life is over. The season of you being sick every day of your life, being sick every day of your life is over. The season of the devil having his way in your life is over. Why are you wearing the back there, sir? You don't wear the back there. That season is over. It's time now for you to live an abundant life. It's time now for you to live life in the fullest. It's time now for you to live a prosperity, a life of prosperity. Understand, that is not only talking about money. That's talking about everything being whole in your life. Hallelujah. No more sick days. Hallelujah. No more broke days. Hallelujah. No more begging days. It's time now for you to be promoted. Hallelujah. And elevated to a new place in God. I don't know if all of you came, but I said I only have 15 minutes. Hallelujah. It's your time to be free. I said it's your time to be free. Hallelujah. It's your time to be free. It's your time now to walk in victory. I want to say it. I said it before I say it again. You are you looking around trying to find out what's going to be, who's next, and who's going to be the next big thing. Well, you are the next big thing. You are the thing that God is looking for. You are the person that God is trying to raise up to bless you. He's raising you up to bless you. I told you he said in Psalm 66, I think it is, he said, I allow the man to roll, run over your head. I allow you to be buffered. I allow you to go through some stuff, but I only allow it so I can bring you to a wealthy place. So I can bring you to a blessed place. I allowed you to go through some pain. I allowed you to endure some affliction. I allowed the devil to buffet you a little bit. But I only allow it because I want to bring you to a wealthy place. 
The question is, are you ready to be promoted? Are you ready to go to your wealthy place? That's what's on the side, you say, you don't have to be broke another day. You don't have to be sick another day. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say it like y'all mean it. Hallelujah. Y'all are gonna sit there and play like y'all ain't hearing this. I say, you don't have to be sick another day. See, I made up in my mind I wasn't gonna be sick. I made up in my mind I ain't gonna be sick. And I can tell you from I was five years old to right where I am today, over 45 years now, I have not been to a doctor, I, never, I have not been in a hospital, because I made up in my mind, God is my healer. God is my deliverer. God is my protector. God is my way maker. Someone say, man, you shouldn't say that because you don't know. Well, I know God, and I'm trusting him, and I know he's able to keep me, to save me, to protect me, and no weapon that is formed, even though it may fall, will be able to prosper because I'm in God and God is in me. So we on warp speed now. Psh. Psh. Warp speed. You know, I told you if you wasn't at the fake clinic, I told people that you know on warp speed you watch Star Trek and then the captain say warp speed. All you see is the line of the of the of the spaceship. You don't see the spaceship until it reach and it slow back down. That's how fast it's going. That's what God is doing now. God has sped you up. He's making you go faster now. Hallelujah. Some of you are on, in unfamiliar ground because you are so used, hallelujah, to walking slow and thinking things over. And God say, ain't time to think things over now. I'm trying to get you to your next blessing. I'm trying to get you to your next breakthrough. I'm trying to get you to your next victory. You got to just trust me. When I say it, do it. Don't think about it. When God say it, don't think about it. Just do it. Some of y'all like to analyze, but he said, this ain't the time. This ain't the hour to analyze. When God say it, what to do? Just do it. Hallelujah. Don't worry about who's going to be upset. Don't worry if your boss is going to get upset. Because this season is not about your boss. This season is about God. Where you got to go now in this world, your boss can't get you there fast enough. Your job can't get you there fast enough. Only God can get you there fast. So you got to now go all in with God. You're more concerned with what your boss saying than you are about what God is saying. And you got that mess right up because you should be more concerned to hear what God's voice is. What is God saying? Forget about the boss. God, what are you saying? And once you get the voice of God in your head, you can't go wrong. Somebody say whoop. Whoop. Whoop speed. He said, I have hastened my words to perform it. I have hastened my words to perform it. Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me. I shall give to every man according as his workshop. I'm please coming back quickly. He don't have time for slow folks right now. If you get on board the fast wagon, you're going to say to this eye. And maybe if we take another lap around, we'll pick you up. You ain't got time for people who analyzing everything. Huh? No dead weight. No prisoners. I carry prisoners. We cutting off the dead weight. Amen. Hallelujah. Throw it overboard. 
We ain't ain't nothing holding the ship back right now. We looking for people who are ready to go. If God say Atlanta next, we ready. If he say California, we ready. If he say New York, we ready. If he say Africa, we ready. If he say Zuma, if he say Ababa, wherever he say, we ready. Why he said no, God say go just do it. His mother say, whatever the, my son tell you to do at the wedding feast, hallelujah. Whatever he tell you to do, just do it. And that day he turned water into wine. Hallelujah. Whatever he say, just do it. You trying to explain things to people who ain't operating the way you operating. Hallelujah. You, you trying to explain God is telling me to do that poison ain't on your level. Hello, could I talk to you? Could I talk to you without offending you? I say when God's speaking something to you, them people ain't on your level. I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care if it's your pastor. I keep telling you all, y'all gonna get mad me all I want. Ain't every pastor call of God. And some of them who call of God ain't doing the work of God, but God called them to do. They ran in error. They ran off the wrong path. Chasing after things that they shouldn't be chasing after. And now they ain't hearing the voice of God no more. So you got to make sure where you connected that they hearing from God. And let me tell you, when you find people who hearing from God, the other people going to say they work in rich crowd because they never see it happen the way it's happening here. is this. They say these fellas doing these miracles and they prophesy by demonic you know help demonic spirits. So my question is if the people who worshiping the devil could go to the devil and call your name and that's correct and tell you what's going on and that's correct. We serve in a greater God. We serve in a mightier God. So if the witchcraft worker could go to the devil and get powers to learn your name and tell you your name and where you live, how come our God can't do the same thing and we serve in a more powerful God? We serve in the greatest power there is on earth, the greatest force that ever lived. Hallelujah. Nothing can even come near to him. So why can't our God tell us your name? If their God could tell them your name. If their God could curse you, why can't our God release that curse? That's how messed up this thing is. Pastors trying to tell you God don't work like that. Their members are all bound up, full with demons. They can't even do one deliverance. I mean, they got, they got legions in some of them, and they can't even get one demon to leave. But when you come here and you are free, they tell you, oh, that's the devil. Don't go out there. They will know they is the devil. I gotta go. I gotta preach it. I only got 15, I only got ten more minutes. Hallelujah! I gotta preach this, and you better you better hear this. He who ever had to hear, let him hear. You, you, your pastor pulling you in the office to try and get you wheeze the devil. Man, tell him he need to come so we can deliver him too. But trust me, plenty of them calling on the phone for one-on-one -on -one sessions right now. And I stand, as, I stand on this book, but as a man of God, we got some of them calling right now, but they don't want to come to the main church. They want one-on-one -on -one session. <laughs> Nicodemus spirit, spirit, come to Jesus by night. But they on the, on the other side trying to say we is the devil. So why are you calling the devil to deliver you? Can I, can I go a little further? Yeah. So can I help you? Yeah. God trying to get you into the place where you need to be. Yeah. This is where you need to be. Yeah. If you've been, if you, you know you got something. You know, listen, nobody really 
then God know you better than you. Huh? You know when something ain't right in your stomach. You know when it's gasping. And you know when it ain't gasping. Come on. You done been to the doctor and they can't pick up nothing wrong with you. Use all of the equipments that the modern day equipments that we have right now and they can't pick up what's going nothing going on with you. They tell you go back home, you are right. Huh? Can't find nothing. The demons got you. How do you think you was going crazy? Going out of your head. You go to the doctor, he say, I don't see a thing wrong with you. He send you back home. You going home, you feel you, you, you he was scratching your head and doing a thing. You, you, can, you go back to the doctor, the doctor can't say what's going wrong with you. They putting in scan, they, they checking your heart, they get you hooked up to all these things, you know, all over your chest, all over your back, trying to pick up something, they ain't picking up nothing. But you know what you're feeling, you know what you're experiencing in your body. That's a spiritual attack. That's a demonic attack. So you need to come to a spiritual doctor. Either you should go to no natural doctor to deal with spiritual attack. Spiritual attack got to be dealt with by spiritual doctor. I don't care what psychiatrist you go to. They can't help you. You cannot counsel the devil out. You got to cast that devil out. And you got to be anointed from God to cast him out. And all that money, over $3,500 to the doctor, and they still ain't got say ain't nothing wrong with you. All kind of pills and medicine, things, take this, take that. Oh, we need to, we, we need to submit you to the hospital. Send you home to play doctor on yourself. Check out how much time your heart be going up. How fast it going up. You, you now got to be your own doctor. Hey, some sicknesses is natural. We know that. We ain't running from that. Some things natural. But some things ain't natural. Some things ain't natural. And I dare to tell you, before you go to the natural, you better try find the spiritual. I can help you with something else. Even the one that's natural, most of the time is caused by something spiritual. Even the things that may manifest in your natural body as a lump is sometimes caused by a spiritual, some spiritual um, demonic encounter that you have. So you got to know. Go to God first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we say, you deaf, deaf and dumb spirit get out. When the deaf and dumb spirit leave, the boy start to hear. He right in the back, they're leaning up on the wall right now. He could hear. He took out his hair and head. He said, I can hear you clearly now. Right after the deaf and dumb spirit was cast out, he got his sight, he got his, his hearing back, and his speech cleared up much, much more than it, than it really was. And then I... Love a boy. Looking for wife now. Say, I'm 28 years old, boy. What you talking about? I can handle a wife now. But we had to cast the deaf and the dumb spirit out of him first. And he started the hair, his mother took his, or his sister, whoever that is, took his hair and head out. Three thousand dollars they spent on hair and aid. Now he's hearing. Never put them back in from that day to now. On the water driving jet ski. You know deaf person going on no jet ski. See, I'm trying to show you. This is a spiritual value you in. The spiritual is, I like to say, we like to say it's more real than the natural. But then the devil has found a way to make you think it's not. It's a spiritual warfare. Fight in the spirit. Hallelujah. Fight in the spirit. God said, I fight the good fight of faith. 
Not, the, not, not throwing bottles and rock and spears and shooting guns. The fight of faith in the spirit. And because I fight that good fight of faith, I can lay hold to eternal life. You got to learn to fight in the spirit. Do walk there in the spirit. Can't sleep good? Get up and start walking in the spirit. In your house, people, the things got you tormented. Walk there in the spirit. Come on. You lay down in your bed. Every time you close your eyes, you're seeing demonic things happening in your, in your, in your, in, 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 with your eyes closed. And you thinking that's in your head. Let me tell you, that's in your room. That's demonic activities going on in your room. It's just that you can't see it with the natural eye. When you close your natural eye and you start looking from a spirit, but you see these, all these dogs and, and snakes and things. You think that thing in your mind, that's not in your mind. That's a, that's a spiritual activity that's happening right in your room. So you got to get up and do warfare. Wherever you saw it, if you saw the snake over by the door, you over there and you stomping in the name of Jesus and you praying and come on, cut off the head of the snake, cancel the plan of the enemy. Yeah. 